Good morning, Crossroads. Hello again. Um, I feel as though I was just up here boasting on my God and the mighty ways that he's changed my life and my marriage. But does God just show up and show out one time and then sit on the bench? Nah. Just as he keeps blowing our minds and blessing our socks off, we are called to keep sharing um, and keep glorifying him, giving him all the praise for the ways that he works. Thank you, Bishop, for preaching such a convicting sermon last week. <laughs> Which, by the way, has he ever preached a sermon to y'all that y'all are like, uh, shuffling your feet, uncomfortable in your seat? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does that, doesn't he? I felt this way before his sermon. Um, actually, for several weeks in, in June and July, God kept telling me that our church had a need. Only I felt much like those called in the examples of our bishop's sermon, unqualified, too broken, too busy, uncomfortable, comfortable in what I was already doing. And probably my worst excuse of all, aren't I doing enough ministry in your church? I flat told God, I'm carrying too much. I don't have the time to learn that job or pick up any more responsibility. In short, I don't want to. Jesse asked us to sit in on a lunch and learn back then. Um, and going through the info packet, it stood out from the page, literally stood out from the page. Youth leader needed. And I was like, uh-uh. I felt such a strong pull and conviction. I could not rest, y'all. I couldn't sleep. Um, it would not leave my mind. Still, I told God, I'm sorry. I'm carrying too much. Jason and I went to a church and gave a double testimony, a back-to-back -back testimony. And afterwards, I felt it again. And I said, but see, God, all this stuff that I just talked about that I'm still struggling with and I'm still carrying around, I cannot do what you're asking of me. A woman approached us that day and told us of a marriage conference that was coming up and women's encounter that I just had to go to. Like, there was no, you should, you, you might like this. No, you're going to this. I'll pay for it. All right. She said that, that they were surely needed and would be a blessing, and I grudgingly went. I did not want to go. Encounter, women's encounter, was a game changer. Um, during the weekend that I was there, I was able to give so much stuff to God um, that I still carried <laughs> and stopped dragging those chains around with me like I owned them. If you haven't been to an encounter, women's encounter, men's encounter, they hold several a year. If you haven't been, go. If you think it's not for you, go. If you think that your walk and your faith is solid, go. This was whole surrender. I left there telling God, okay, um, I don't know what you're doing, and I don't know how this is going to work, but whatever you say, dude. It was there that I chose obedience. But Satan and this broken world are riddled with fleshly desires and unfathomable desire to break that walk of trust and obedience to God. For example, post-encounter is a study that they do for several weeks after encounter. Week one, Sunday, day of encounter, right? Day of post-encounter study, I told on my car. Two hours before I was supposed to be there. And I remembered in that moment, I could hear the sirens coming to get me. <laughs> um, I remembered the ongoing prayer group that happened during encounter. The whole time you're there, literally the whole weekend, these women 
are in consistent prayer in shifts 24 hours a day the whole time you're there. And when that memory popped into my head, I wasn't scared of riding in the ambulance. I wasn't scared of them pulling me from the car. I wasn't even scared that my car just got totaled and what was I going to do now? I just was like, okay. <sighs> then the next week, we had a marriage conference. Remember that marriage conference I told you about? That lady said, you're going? Yeah. We have done, Jason and I, in our recovery, in our reconciliation walk, we have done so many different marriage conference, marriage studies, reading books on marriage and God. If you think you've done every marriage study or how to or small group or seminar, this is completely different, guys. <laughs> um, Pre-engaged, engaged or married. If you're walking that road of relationship and it might eventually lead to marriage, you should probably go to this. Jeff and Yolanda flay their own marriage wide open, and they use their testimonies and their marriage as a vulnerable tool to teach couples and walk alongside couples through some of the beautiful, some of the confusing, some of the chaos and frustration, and some of the downright messy and even nastiness that happens in marriage in this fallen world because relationships are messy, right? It was small and intimate so that they could have one-on-one -on -one in prayer with couples as they felt led to. Both days, we walked out of there so unbelievably full. It amazed me how God laid the entire curriculum for this on the heart of this one couple. After all of their struggles and hardships, which were unbelievable, by the way, and asked them to tell people about the inner workings of the most intimate relationship one could ever have next to our Savior. And he asked them to do it repeatedly, over and over at every single seminar. It was astonishing and inspiring to see them being so vulnerably obedient to a completely foreign and unknown calling to them. <laughs> Directly after, we were asked to share another double testimony before baptisms at Lifehouse Church in Abilene. We chose to be obedient, again, <laughs> and in our raw vulnerability and obedience, God blessed us yet again. Hearing that we had a need and I was without a vehicle. God laid it on the hearts of some church members there, and I was blessed with another car. <laughs> yeah. Paying only the repair bill to have some minor repairs done, which happened to equal no more than the small money in my savings account and the money that I had budgeted to pull out of my next paycheck. <laughs> God is amazing. Like I said, if you haven't gone to Encounter, go. Um, the dates for Encounter should be in your bulletin for the next Encounter. Um, and the dates for the next marriage conf conference, if they aren't in your bulletin, they will be soon. Um, I have a couple verses for you guys. Deuteronomy 11, 26 through 28 says, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other gods which you have not known. And Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear or be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you and will not leave you nor forsake you. Psalms 37, 4 and 5 say, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And James 1 2 and 3 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, 
knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if you, any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You guys, Burb said last week, yes, affectionately, Burb. Burb said last week that sometimes we're faced with a call that is black and white with no middle ground, with no indecisive box to check off. I was happy in the ministries that I was already doing in our church. I loved the members of the band. I loved playing with those kids one Sunday out of a month. Like, I was happy in those ministries, but God wanted me to do more. And so I stepped down from all of those ministries because God told me that what this church needed was not another person in the band and not another person in the children's church, but a youth leader. And I have ideas, but I have zero idea what I'm doing, and I have no idea what that's going to look like. So <laughs> know that when you see me doing this, it is all God, that it is not me. He doesn't, he, he doesn't call the equipped. Thanks, guys. <laughs>